All right, welcome to Unit 7. Um, unit 7 is going to be a little bit different than what we've talked about before. Um, in Unit 7, we're going to discuss confidence intervals. And um, the first section is just going to be a basic introduction to confidence intervals. And then in the next couple of sections, we will get into what a confidence interval looks like for sample proportions and for sample means. OK, so at the end of this section, you're going to be able, we're going to discuss the term point estimate and margin of error from a confidence interval. Um, these two are going to be really important, interpreting a confidence interval in context and a confidence level in context. We're going to describe how the sample size and confidence level affect the length of a confidence interval. And we're going to explain how practical issues like non-response, undercoverage, and response bias can affect the interpretation of a confidence interval. All right, so this is a transition uh, to Unit 7 from Unit 6. All right, so there's going to be a big difference between Unit 7 and Unit 6. Here's the big difference. In the past, whenever you did questions from Unit 6 with population proportions and population means, we assumed that you knew the true value of the population parameter. And then after we knew the true value of the population parameter, we were asked questions about the distribution of the statistic based on the population parameter. In this section, we're we're no longer going to pretend that we know the true value of the population parameter. Most of the time, we're not going to be able to collect all of the data to figure out exactly what the population mean or proportion is. This is more realistic. Confidence intervals are going to be more realistic in this situation because we're really only going to know the value of a statistic, and we're going to use this value of the statistic to estimate the value of the population parameter. And that's what most statisticians do. They use the value of a statistic that they collect to estimate the value of a population parameter. OK, so um, let's just talk about the basics of what exactly a confidence interval is. What if you had to give one number to estimate an unknown population parameter? What would it be? How would you know what to choose it to be? And what would you use to estimate the parameters? OK, so just remember when we're discussing means, you're always going to use X bar or your sample mean to estimate the population mean. If you're discussing proportions, which is um, categorical variables, you're going to use P hat or your sample proportion to estimate the population proportion. But let's say you go out and take a sample of 100 students in Fairfax County and you find the population mean or po population mean GPA, or sorry, sample mean GPA or sample proportion of students that have a proportion of a GPA greater than 2.0. What if you did it again with a different 100 group of students? Every single time you do a sample and take a sample of 100 students, the mean and sample proportion are not going to be the same. Every sample is different, so every sample mean and sample proportion is going to be slightly different. It doesn't mean they're going to be all over the place, but it does mean they could be they could be a little bit different. We're going to use that sample mean or that sample proportion. We're going to now give a name to that that you find for each of your samples that you take. That's going to be called a point estimate. And we'll discuss what exactly a point estimate is. A point estimate is a statistic that provides an estimate of a population parameter. So basically think about this. When you take a sample mean or sample proportion, it's one point. It is one specific mean, one specific proportion. That point we can use to estimate what the population mean or population proportion could be. The value of that statistic, okay, so if x bar is 3.0 or p hat is 50%, we use that statistic. Um, the value of that statistic is called our point estimate. So basically the x bar or the p hat that you find is your point estimate or your estimate of what the population mean or proportion should be. Okay, so let's just take a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a look at a point estimate. All right, so basically a point estimate we already said was a statistic that provides an estimate of the population parameter. So basically, your sample mean, sample proportion gives us sort of an idea of where the population mean or population proportion could lie. Okay, now when we're finding a point estimate, sample mean or sample proportion, our goal is to have no bias and low variability. Now, just to keep in mind, we're never going to eliminate bias and eliminate variability. Um, so our goal is just to have as low bias as possible. OK, also when we're taking a look at point estimates, we're going to take into consideration the fact that repeated sampling is going to yield different results for sample mean or sample proportion. So what exactly does that mean? That means that if 
I am going to take a sample of 100 students from Fairfax County and find the average mean GPA, that's going to be different if I take another sample of 100 students, find an average mean of their GPA. So how do I know which sample mean is better, the first one or the second one? Okay, We're sort of taking that into consideration when we discuss confidence intervals. So we're going to take a look at a few examples to make sure we understand exactly what a point estimate really is. All right, so in each of the following settings, determine the point estimator you would use and calculate the value of the point estimate. Okay, all right, so take a look at your first one. The makers of a new golf ball want to estimate the median distance of new balls will travel when hit by a mechanical driver. They select a random sample of 10 balls and measure the distance each ball travels after being hit by the mechanical driver. Here are the distances in yards. So what would be your point estimate in that situation? The golf ball manufacturer would also like to investigate the variability of the distance traveled by the golf balls by estimating the interquartile range. Range. What would be your point estimate for that? The math department wants to know what proportion of its students own a graphing calculator, so they take a random sample of 100 students and find that 28 own a graphing calculator. What would be your point estimate for that one? Okay, so the first one, since they want that since they're discussing the median distance, the sample median would be your point estimator. So the sample median was 285 yards, that's a point estimator or the estimate for the population median. In the second one, we are using the sample IQR in order to estimate the population IQR. So notice how some of these, a point estimator it doesn't always have to necessarily be the sample mean or the sample proportion. It's based on what the question is asking. Okay, so the sample IQR is three yards, and that's basically like saying that's an estimate for what the population IQR could be. In the last one, the sample proportion, we're using it as a point estimator for the population proportion. So 28% of students um, own a graphing calculator in that sample. That's our point estimate for what the population proportion could possibly be. Just remember, that the point estimate comes from the sample and every time you take a new sample your point estimate is going to change. So the point estimate is going to come from your sample mean or your sample proportion. So confidence intervals are going to help us give a sort of a range of values um, of where the true mean or true proportion could lie given the fact that your point estimate does change every time you take a new sample. All right, so from that, let's just discuss the idea of a confidence interval. Let's say you want to find the average amount of money a freshman earns in college a week. We decide to take a sample of 16 students and we find the sample mean to be $240.79. That's your point estimate right there. Is the value of the population mean mu exactly $240.79? Probably not, because this just came from one sample. It's just an estimate of what the population could be. However, since the sample mean is $240.79, we could guess that the population mean is about $240.79, but how close is the $240.79, how close is that to the actual population mean? So to answer this question, we are going to ask another. How would the sample mean X bar vary if we took many simple random samples of size 16 from the population? So this is like asking if I take many, many samples of size 16, how is that sample mean going to vary from one sample to the other? So what is, is the next sample going to be 300 or is it going to be around 240, so like 245? Okay, so we're going to sort of answer that question on this slide. How would the sample mean vary if we took many simple random samples of size 16 from the population? Okay, so and remember when we're saying how will it vary, what is the variability? That's, that's us taking a look at the standard deviation. The standard deviation discusses the spread of the data. So if we um, take a look, okay, let's assume that the population standard deviation is 20. We take a simple random sample of size 16. We get a mean, this is one point estimate, $240. We have another point estimate of 246 and a third point estimate of 248. We take all of our simple random samples of size 16, we put them into a sampling distribution, okay, so we're assuming we have a whole bunch of samples of size 16 and the average amount of money that students make within those samples. We 
don't know the population standard deviation in this case or sorry we don't know the population mean but we're kind of assuming that we know the population standard deviation so how do we find the sampling um, distribution standard deviation remember you take the population divided by the square root of n so 20 divided by the square root of 16 which is 4 and that gives us 5 so the standard deviation is 5 this sampling distribution up here represents all the sample means now they're all going to be different but how close are they to the true mean remember they're all different because they all came from different samples of size 16 and we're going to take a look at how we can sort of estimate how close this is actually to the true mean okay so to estimate the mean wages earned mu so that's the population mean we can use this point estimate two hundred forty dollars and seventy nine cents um, to help us make this estimation we don't expect the population mean to be exactly equal to our sample so our goal is to find out how accurate we think our estimate is all right now in repeated samples the value of x bar will follow a normal distribution with a mean um, of unknown and a standard deviation of five okay now okay so here's our sampling distribution the 68 95 99.7 rule so the empirical rule tells that us that in 95 percent of all samples of size 16 okay X bar will be within 10 standard deviations of mu. So what that means is we don't know this mean right here, but remember 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. So we're not sure what this is, but if one standard deviation is five, so that means our mean here, the true mean should lie within 10 points above the mean and 10 points below the mean. So 95% of all of the means are going to lie within $10 above the mean and $10 below the mean. So if X bar is within $10 or 10 points of the true population, so if that $240 is within $10 of my population mean either above or below, then mu or the population mean is within 10 points of X bar. So it's basically like saying if we find X bar and um, if we find X bar and it's within $10 of the true mean, then mu is within $10 of the sample mean. So that tells us the interval from whatever our true mean is, okay, this tells us from the interval, my sample minus $10 to my sample plus $10 will capture the true population in about 95% of all samples of size 16. Okay, so this slide is really, really important because this tells us that when I find a point estimate, if I take $10 away and I add $10, this tells us that within that interval, I'm going to capture the true population 95% of the time because within our confidence interval, remember two standard deviations of above and two standard deviations below, 95% of the data is going to lie within those um, within those boundaries. So if we estimate that mu lies somewhere in the interval from $230.79 to $250.79, that's taking 10 away from the mean and adding 10 to the sample mean, we'd be calculating an interval using a method that captures the true population mean in 95% of all possible samples of this size. Okay, so this last concept is really, really important. So if we estimate that mu lies somewhere in this interval from 230 to 250, we're basically saying since 95% of the possible samples are going to lie in, lie in that interval, that means that we're creating an interval using a method that could possibly capture the true mean in about 95 percent of the possible samples of this size. Okay, um, so let's, um, before we go into this slide, I'm going to do the next recording. So go ahead and move on to the next recording once um, you're done with this.